focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to our special CEO Roundtable series, India at 75 Opportunities and Challenges, presented by PMI in association with CNBC TV 18. India at 75 will have a number of things going for her, the power of a strong demographic dividend, the talent of a billion plus people, emerging technologies that can help us leapfrog into the future, and lots more. At the same time, there will be numerous challenges as well, the challenge of job creation, the challenge of infrastructure development, adopting digital technologies across the country, and lots more. So through this series, we are trying to gather ideas for India at 75 from eminent CEOs, policymakers, as well as academicians. And today, we are coming to you from the city of Bengaluru, and I'm joined by a set of eminent CEOs from the city. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you on board with us for this special CEO roundtable series. Uh, let me begin by asking what you think is going to be the one biggest challenge and the one biggest opportunity for India at 75, that's in five years from now. Raj? I wonder if there's a demographic dividend or it's a demographic disaster, which is going to happen in the next few, few years if we don't do something about it right now. Right. Uh, coming specifically from the project management uh, arenas or space, uh, I really see it as an opportunity. Uh, about 20 years back, we did extremely well in IT. And uh, IT became a huge uh, employer. Uh, also, if you look at the entire ecosystem, the kind of employment they provided across uh, was phenomenal. Uh, given the fact that uh, Indians, as, uh, as a culturally, um, we learn well, and we come out, with a, come out in a very uh, tough environment, I believe we are actually suited to be good project managers. What we lack, however, is the sense of discipline. Mm -hmm. And our, I mean, we, we normally tend to do what is we call as jugaad. Right? Mm -hmm. And we can avoid a bit of this jugaad and get into a little more organized uh, approach. Personally, to me, I think project management and creating a professional could be the, possibly the next boom for India and the capital. And this is what we could export globally. Okay. Because we are really tuned to that. So there is opportunity and there is, right. there is challenge. And it, for me, both of them are same in terms of how do we utilize the demographics to its best advantage. The internet, of course, will play a huge role. It has already played a huge role in driving growth across sectors. And um, uh, Cisco, Samir, is uh, involved with the government in the Digital India mission. So uh, tell us a little bit about how these public-private partnerships can really be uh, made more effective in the next five years? What are the biggest challenges in a large-scale complex project like the Digital India Mission? And uh, you know, what is it that the public and private sector can together do to improve efficiencies on that front? Yeah. On projects that we have done with the government, now whether it is smart cities or smart metering or managing substations with IoT sensors and so on and so forth, uh, the one thing I have learned uh, in my short time at Cisco right now um, has been that uh, it takes a lot of time for both sides to learn, right? Uh, how to implement, how to scope, how to manage these projects. Um, and we learn together on these projects. Um, but it doesn't take long after you've learned that to roll them out fast enough, right? So it becomes business. So it, it's like a big project that you do, and you put in a lot of effort and learning on both sides. But over a period of time, it becomes business as usual on both sides. And that's when the momentum actually comes, comes in. Uh, project management, I think, is, is definitely an area that we feel on both sides, whether it's the government or uh, the industry, uh, need to spend uh, a lot of time on. You know, in Cisco, we have probably around 900 project managers across our engineering, IT, and businesses, and we have programs specifically to help them uh, improve, called PM Connect. So uh, we, we believe strongly in the fact that once you've uh, implemented, the momentum that you can get by learning on those projects, uh, large projects, is pretty significant. Right. And uh, Bala, the other ambitious project that the government has is the Make in India initiative. And Boeing, of course, is uh, contributing significantly to that. Uh, 
how essential is it going to be for India to have a very globally competitive supply chain that's of course going to be key to India's success in the next five years? I think India has to be competitive globally. Uh, we talked about the internet, knowledge is available everywhere. Uh, people know what is going on uh, throughout the world. Uh, very often we think in terms of, you know, India is competing with the West and we are cheaper and somehow, you know, work will keep coming from U.S. or Europe someplace. But our competitors are no longer the Americans or the Europeans. They are sitting in somewhere else in Asia. Yeah. It could be the Philippines, it could be Vietnam, it could be any of the other countries which are, from a cost point of view, more or less the same. Uh, so this is no longer about we are more efficient from a cost perspective. It really has to be we are capable of doing something more. We are able to contribute, you know, independent of what the cost is, we are able to contribute uh, to a large extent. And in that sense, I think uh, being competitive is extremely important. Let me bring in Raj at this point. Uh, so we, talk, we talked of some large-scale national missions, Digital India, Make in India. How relevant is the project management culture and mindset going to be to achieving these large-scale complex missions? And like Samir said, they uh, you know, emphasize a lot on project management within Cisco. But from the rest of corporate India, what are your expectations? Where do you think the top leadership should be focusing as far as project management is concerned? I, I would say there are pockets of excellence in, in all these segments. All of us know about Delhi Metro. Um, so it's a case study of how, how somebody can deliver a project on time, a ahead social, of time. A social project ahead of time within the budget. Yeah. There is also private cases like Cisco or l and construction. There, there are many cases where they are su successful. But the issue is that at least 10 times more cases of unsuccessful projects which, is, which has happened are not on time. I mean, look at it very clearly. There are two things which really uh, bothers me when I look at this: is the lack of planning which we do in our country. A project is announced, and we sort of jump into action before we even do any any amount of planning. I remember a few years back, uh, I was traveling abroad, and uh, going from the airport, and there's a sign which said, "I was going in the month of May." The sign which said that if from month of August onwards, there is going to be a diversion on this road because the door the road is going to get repaired. In Bombay, I live in Bombay, and when I go out, <laughs> I go out in the morning, and suddenly say, "Fire! Fire! The dog is the, the road has been dug up." Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no no information. So, a completely lack of planning. There's one 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 important thing here. The second important thing is, as a culture, I don't think we have a really. A, I think we are risk ignorant culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, projects go into issues. There are delays. There are risks which we need to identify, and therefore those those. Unless we are able to identify those and get those into place, and this is what I've seen across projects. I mean, in you take whether it's public projects or private projects, you just get into it, jump into the project, no planning. I think there is a much, much better way of doing things, much, much better way of getting high predictability for your results, and it's been it's happened across the globe. It's just not happened. I mean, if you look at uh, the various researches which PMI has done, it very clearly shows that. Moment an organization has committed itself into project management, the results are always higher. To your other question, which is very important, and this is something which I've always felt when I talk to corporates, is that uh, the moment you say the word project management, somehow the CEO believes that it's not meant for me, it's meant for somebody <laughs> junior. junior. <laughs> and the fact that project management is going to be the key element, because at the end of the day, project management is, is, is that bridge which connects the strategy to execution and business results. So getting that attention is extremely important. And that's why we keep on thrusting and talking about the fact that executive sponsorship is something extremely important. And whether, whether you call it project management or program management or portfolio management, I mean, you can give it any name you want to give it. But having this focus on ensuring that execution, planning and execution is important. That's something which is really, really something which we need to focus. Okay, so, so let me get Partha to respond to that. Uh, would you agree with a lot of what Raj is saying? And uh, at Mindtree, what's the sort of investment that you're making in your managerial talent? Are you helping them increase efficiencies? And what's the larger picture for the IT sector? Oh, absolutely. I completely agree with uh, both, uh, both the points that Raj mentioned. 
um, the, both from an attention from a senior management point of view as well as the importance of you know of project management capabilities in people i also believe one of the things we were talking about before we came into this panel is that you know, if you look at project management capability they also have evolved over a period of time uh, if you look at it industry specifically most of the project managers grew at a certain time uh, how the it industry evolved now some of the skills they had was very relevant at the time but they're no longer relevant now and you need a completely different way by which you need to approach project management. Uh, like, I, like you said, it's, it doesn't matter which way you look at it, project management, program management, or portfolio management. I think the, there is lots of change which is happening. And I think our, within Mindtree, we are putting significant amount of effort to ensure that we upgrade the skills and capabilities of these people to be able to meet the current needs and the future needs. Dilip, just to bring you in at this point also, what is the SAP experience with respect to project management? Uh, do you invest heavily in creating in-house, uh, you know, certified project managers, and uh, you know, what's the what's the extent to which you can mitigate risks and losses if you have qualified project managers on board? So, two aspects I think which are which are very important. I think even from an India context, and it is same. I think um, as a typical Indian, we need to get away from the mentality of uh, of always doing something which is copying from someone else or best practices. Always thinking about I will wait for someone, five people to do successfully, and I will be the sixth person to copy it and do it in a, in a perfect and pragmatic way. Yeah. I think th that time is gone. I'm, I'm just arguing that you need to find a way that you disrupt things and you create something for the world. Mm -hmm. And that factor needs to happen also inside as a part of the project management. And, and, and that becomes extremely key if India wants to move forward. Okay, I'm going to ask you to hold that thought right there. On that note, we're going to head into a short break right now, but stay with us as the conversation on India at 75 opportunities and challenges continues on the other side. Welcome back to our special CEO roundtable series, India at 75, Opportunities and Challenges. Let's shift gears a little bit and also talk about perhaps the biggest challenge that we are facing today, that of job creation. We have over one million people joining the job market almost every month. Uh, there is a sort of dichotomy between what is taught in institutes and what the industry expects. So for India to really uh, you know, emerge as a global superpower in the next couple of years, uh, Vethi, what are the sort of changes that we require within our education system and uh, what are your expectations from industry leaders? You are, you are the only educationist on a panel of CEOs here today, so please uh, throw open all the, that expectation list from all of these people here. Let, let, me, let me step back and take a couple of minutes to explain three dimensions. Education, higher education, uh, and then education for jobs, and then this whole uh, gamut about skills. We must, we must understand there are three different uh, buckets, if you will. And j just to put some numbers in perspective, India has a gross enrollment ratio of 22%. The gross enrollment ratio is the number of youth which get into higher education as a percentage of the total eligible youth who could get in. The global average is around 45, right? The Western Europe and America is around the uh, North 60s. We have a plan to take this 22% to 30% in the next five years, and that's what we are talking about in India in 75. And to make this 22% move to 30%, we will have 30 million youth get into higher education in this country. Now, we have 750 universities. We have 40,000 colleges and institutions. If we have to only look at conventional education to take care of this 30 million additional youth, every fourth day you must put up a new college, mm. and every seventh day you must put up a new university. So this project management will have a huge work of just creating <laughs> universities and universities. So clearly there must be an alternate. Mm. One of the things which I think the government is very actively acknowledging and supporting is this whole concept of online education. You don't need one faculty at 40 students. One faculty can teach 400,000 students right. by the power of uh, technology, mm. by disseminating this uh, education at a larger platform. The second dimension is how much of this education that we do is relating to employability. Getting a job is a limited portion of education. Now, how much do industries work to make these happen? There could be a bunch of opportunities which 
throw up today in terms of the jobs. Right. If, if I continue, we, we talk of students getting into internship, right? And I'm being deliberately provocative here. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of our faculties do we get from industry who take a sabbatical and come and teach? The third dimension, which I think is very important, is this whole thing of skill, and, and, and you talked about it from an ad perspective. I think there's a social uh, element that I, I believe. As most of Indians, we continue to believe uh, a degree education is, is like a passport, right? I mean, people in this room, how many of us struggle to get a qualified plumber or electrician at home? Try getting a good plumber at home, you'll give up. Go to UK and try getting a plumber who's not certified. He's not allowed to touch your uh, plumbing line if he or she is not certified. Right. If the industry in India states that I will only insist on certified blue collar people who will work for me, then the push to get people certified, vocational skills, there will be a spurt there'll of that. Much, that be I think that, that's a dimension which I want to sure. leave it with you guys. Sure. All right. I'm going to ask each one of you to uh, quickly comment on one thing that you think is, is a low-hanging fruit for India at 75, which can definitely be achieved and, uh, you know, which will help India leapfrog into the future. Yeah. Samir? I think this nation has a tremendous amount of talent, which naturally is very good at uh, STEM, right, which a lot of other countries are struggling with. Um, and that's pretty obvious from what we've done in the IT industry over the last two decades, right? So let's focus on the fact that we have a strength in that. Uh, the second thing that I'm very clear about is that we should not discount the importance of financial acumen, given all the focus that we have on um, what I call technology and IT. You know, I, that, that's probably one of the things that I would probably say is something that we should focus on. All right. Bala, one low-hanging fruit that India can definitely achieve by 75, and we'll keep that really short. I think we need to be much more open to collaborating, creating consortia, having industry and government work together. Right. I think there is a huge opportunity if we are willing to open our aperture and look beyond this, you know, India only kind of thing. Raj? But 10 years back, a project manager was known to know only if he, if he knew the project plan body of knowledge, the book, which is all about the hard, hard skills, then you are a project manager. But today, it's, it's completely transforming. The project manager is required to know what you said. Business skills and leadership skills are extremely important for the person to know. And if you look at the, if you look at the role the person plays, what he learns, he's actually learning things which become which makes him prepared for being a leader tomorrow. Right. Because he's learning about how do you manage stakeholders, he's learning how to manage about communications, uh, HR, integra uh, integration, and the whole, whole lot. Right. And to me, if you ask me low-hanging fruit, the entire program is not rocket science. So you don't need to have a four-year or eight-year degree and a PhD to do a, mm -hmm. uh, become a project manager. You just need to take a one week off and do a full a program to understand the various aspects. It's the, it's, I mean, most of us know what's, what we're doing, but the only thing is we don't have the overall picture, what, what right. is important. So once we have the overall picture, I think, I'm not saying that everybody who does a program will, will be a good project manager, I'm not saying that, but at least they will all talk the same language, there's a better understanding, and hopefully there'll be far higher productivity, because I think what India needs today is to be able to deliver on its projects and programs right. to achieve, because the business outcomes, those are, those are things which we need to achieve. And if we can get them prepared today, I think uh, 75 and beyond, I think we will be on the real growth path. Okay. Ready? So, quick one is the intersection between jobs, youth, and the skills. Hmm. I think all three segments continue to pull into that intersection between any type of job requires any type of skills and we have enough and more people right. uh, that we have in this system. That we, can, we should not get too bogged down about everybody, including, including the educational institutions like us, saying the next five years we are going to put 20 academies only to do artificial intelligence because that's the buzzword today. Right. By the time my institute comes up, maybe that's gone yeah. and something else has come up. So we, we need think tanks to tell us what is the next 20, uh, 10 years later the type of skills required and start working on getting those people in. I, I, I'm hugely optimistic on the learnability of our youth today. At a country level, it's important for us to have a strategy as well. 
It's not just about organizations needing a strategy. Uh, because it's very tempting to become everything to everybody across the world. Strategy is all about making a choice. I think it's important Good for us as a country to decide these are the 10 things, these are the 15 things that I want to be the best in the world. I think that's point number one. Point number two is actually, I think YD just touched upon it, is actually, I think we have to avoid getting into this herd mentality. Mm. 15 years back, I think everybody said everybody has to become an IT engineer. Yeah. Right. right. Today, everybody has to become an entrepreneur. Right? I think we have to move away from this herd mentality and, and that is misleading a whole lot of youth in a particular direction, right. which not, not necessarily may be the best for the country. Final so point. I feel that India will still have the challenges on the road, infrastructures, traffic jams, booths. I genuinely feel India needs to consider this as problem as an opportunity. Every opportunity is a business model and every business model is a new venture. Mm. So I just say take bold, go risk and disrupt the world. All right. Thank you so much, Dilip. And thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure talking to all of you. With that, it's a wrap of the first episode of this three-part CEO roundtable series. And we are, of course, gathering ideas for India at 75, ideas from industry leaders, academia, as well as policymakers that we hope to share with the government. Thanks for joining us today. Goodbye. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.